I have a message from the Lord. Repent and try again. <laughs> Glory, turn to James 1, please. From verse 12. You know, one of the things that the Lord says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, and that's lack of understanding. And, and, and one of the things of understanding, there's two types of Christians, obedient and disobedient. And the end of it, one is destruction, one is prosperity and blessing. Amen? And, you know, we're not fighting flesh and blood. We're fighting powers of darkness. And that's one of the main things that we share and teach here, to make what is unseen to become seen. So when we begin these teachings and so forth, it's so that God puts us in a place where we have no excuse. Amen? You know, you, everybody knows what's right and wrong. But not everybody knows what's righteousness. And so in this area where God is, you know, that's why all kinds of stuff is going on in the world. He's shaking up everything. There's a great shaking going on. And everyone's life is going to be shaken. So that you can come out of the deception. And James chapter 1 and verse 12, it says something very powerful. It says, blessed is the man who what? Endures. In other words, who overcomes the temptations. You know, we all make promises to God. Oh, Lord, I'll never do this again. Right? And then we did it again. You know? But, more, you know, when we were in that condition, we didn't have the power of the anointing of Christ Jesus. But blessed is the man who endures the temptations curses the one who doesn't and when you are tempted and you don't overcome you become cursed and every demon in hell has a legal access to you it says for when he has been approved he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him a lot of people say they love him but they don't obey him let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own lust, desires, and then enticed. Now, we have talked about lust being, uh, living under the, uh, uh, living under satanic torment. But I'm going to share something tonight. It's living under satanic trickery. It's living under what? Satanic trickery. He says, then when this desire has conceived, in other words, when you've agreed with it, it gives birth, in other words, it gives birth to the presence of evil. And when it is full grown, it brings forth death. In other words, the end result is death. Amen? Now, he says we're drawn away from the true reality, and we've been talking about reality. From the true reality, by lust. Lust is the number one thing that draws people out of the true reality. Living under satanic trickery. Then when a Greek gives birth, which is an open door to demons, when an individual continues, it brings death, and the end result is consequences. 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 You know, we've heard of, uh, everyone here has heard of Russian roulette. They're still blaming the Russians, even when it's called roulette. <laughs> you know, you spin the, you get a gun, and it's got a bullet in there, and you spin it. And you put it to your head. And you pull the trigger. And you hope that when you pull the trigger, the bullet's not in the chamber. I want to call this the roulette of lust because you never know when that bullet is going to be let loose. Lust. Lust is an overwhelming desire. It is an emotional desire it pushes it strives it promotes it causes people to become blind and stumble in hebrews chapter 10 verse 26 for 
if we sin willfully, in other words, if we agree with that desire, amen, if we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth, so we know the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. In other words, you die in that condition, you go to hell. But a certain fearful expectation of judgment and a fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who's rejected Moses' law d dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more worse punishment do you suppose will be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the Spirit of grace? How much do you suppose will be the punishment? In other words, that's the consequence. For we know him who said, vengeance is mine and I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people, his own people. People are trampling his own blood. No covering, no excuse, only consequences. In Galatians chapter 6, in verse 7, it says, don't be stupid or deceived. Hello. God is what? He's not mocked. Nobody gets away with it. Nobody. For whatever man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh Will the flesh reap corruption? But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. He said, don't grow weary while doing good. In other words, stay connected. Don't be drifting away. Don't agree with the things that are going to harm you. Consider the consequences. For in due season we shall reap if we don't what? Lose heart. Even when we repent, we still reap. Amen? It just, it stops. Now we've got to reap what we've done. In other words, there's consequences. So God's going to bring consequences to us. But that's how he trains us and teaches us. 1 John chapter 2. Well, chastening into the Lord. He says he chastens those he loves. Not everybody's going to like what he's got the consequence. But if you stay in position, all things are going to work to the good. First John chapter 2, verse 15, and we know this one. Do not what? Love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the what? Lust. Living under satanic trickery of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride. Lust of self is not of the Father, but is of the world. And who's the ruler of the earth? Satan. The world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So we've got to hold on until it's gone. Amen? Look at addiction. Do you know that every time somebody goes in the hospital now, no matter what, they're pushing fentanyl. They're pushing it. The hospitals are drug dealers. They're promoters of fentanyl. They don't offer you anything else. They'll give it right to you, and you don't even know you took it. Fentanyl, they're, they're trying to blame everybody else on the bringing in the fentanyl. Well, our own government's bringing it in and killing people right in there and causing them to become addicts. Well, children, it's the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not with us. For they had been with us, they would have continued with us, but they came against us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us, betrayers. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. In fact, you know the consequences. Everyone of us knows it. 
living under satanic trickery, trickery of the reality of darkness. Deception, remember, is the greatest weapon of darkness. That is their greatest weapon, to put an individual in deception, deceive them. Deception is like a narcotic. That's why they call it dope. We call it stupid. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 3, 16. Now it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel, saying, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, hear a word from my mouth and give them warning from me. Listen, God always gives us warnings. We can never use an excuse that we've never been warned. Warnings after warning after warning. When I say to the wicked, you, are sure, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from the wicked way, to save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand, because you didn't warn him. Yet if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. What does God consider wicked? Rebellion. Again, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and becomes wicked and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because you did not give him warning, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be what? Remembered. But his blood I will require at your hands. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man that the righteous should not sin, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he took warning also. You will have delivered your soul. Warning is required by all to those who are rebellious. God warns us every time. Every time we hear a teaching, we can warn, we're being warned. Amen? The Holy Spirit is warning us every day. That's what conviction is about. How many times have you said, man, you know, I, shouldn't, I knew I shouldn't have done that. But now there's the consequences. Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. The Lord builds up lust, tears down. Again, the Lord builds up lust, tears down. Overwhelming desire. Unable to deny yourself. Man, I wanted to quit using dope so bad, but I couldn't. I couldn't stop. I finally had to lock myself up. And I started praying to God, help me, help me, help me, help me, and when he answered me. But the question that came to me, he said, Guy, do you want to get off of drugs and alcohol, or do you want a new life? And I had to consider that, a new life. And when he said new life, it meant I had to let go of everything. Everything. My family, children, everything. I had to walk away from everything. And let everything in my life come to an end so that he can rebuild it and not me. And here I'm thinking, man, okay, I'm just going to say, I want a new life and I would get it. And then he said, show me. And I had a process of showing him that I wanted a new life. It was called obedience. 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 Suffering. Learning. Obedience. In 2 Timothy chapter 2. You can never get off the dope by hanging around people that are still demonized and promoting addiction.
people, places, and things. They even teach that in AAA. Or is that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 2. <laughs> Or they do curb service. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hey, I started there. And then when, after one of the meetings, I kept hearing this voice say, get out of there. He said, look around the room. How much more can you get out of here? I said, nothing. That's how people are doing this fornicating with one another. Oh, no, they're not using, but they're using each other. He said, there's something more for you. Okay, I'm supposed to be doing something more. Hallelujah. But it's, you got to start somewhere. You got to admit you're an addict, but don't stay. Continue to admit you're an addict. You'll never be free. Hi, my name is Ralphie. Whatever. I'm an addict. Hi, my name's Lucy. I'm an addict. Hi, my name's whatever. I'm an addict. Great, let's just keep repeating it and keep cursing ourselves. No one understood the power to life and death of the tongue. Second Timothy 2, verse 1. You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace which is God's plan that is in Christ Jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men or women who will be able to teach others. In other words, they got to be faithful, consistent, unwavering. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in well warfare. This is spiritual warfare. I don't think people still get this yet. Man, to get in the, if you want to be victorious in spiritual warfare, you cannot engage yourself with the affairs of this world. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. You will lose every battle. Amen? It says here, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. You ain't going to win any victory in the spirit until you come out of it. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules of the house. Those are the house of God rules. God's got rules. Amen? You break those rules, there's consequences. Hallelujah. No warfare victory. To the rebellious, to the house of the, uh, of the, to the rules of the house of God. In Proverbs 11, in verse 1. Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. delight. Verse 2, let's speak it. When pride comes, then what? Shame. But with the humble is what? Wisdom. The integrity of the upright will guard them, but perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. Riches do not, do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. The righteousness of the, bl of the blameless will direct his way aright, but the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. The righteous of the upright will deliver them, but the unfaithful will be caught in their Lost, in other words, the trickery of Satan. They'll get caught in that. Unfaithful to the house, his rules, caught in their own lust, blunder, and, and blinders. Again, they're playing that roulette game. People are playing roulette games. Ephesians 4. When we were in the world, the drugs and alcohol, even if you were married, you were married to the dope. Far be it to go back to that. But it's all, all associated with lust. Lust. People compromise all kinds of things out there. Actually playing roulette, don't even realize it. Medical marijuana. Signs all over the place. Christians carrying t things, medical marijuana, 
It's so mind altering. Hello? No, don't, don't get me wrong. Some people need it. Hallelujah. Because they're nuclear reactors. If a person's very ill or something to that degree, I mean, especially if they have cancer or something, and they're in pain, and man, you know, it's better than the narcotics. But people use it as an excuse to get high. Then they can't hear God. They hear every other voice, but they can't hear God. Heck, they, remember I shared before, they can hear the door shut at the airport called paranoia. I've never seen so many people go underneath a couch. They pass around, they hit a crack, and boom, they're underneath there. And they're going, they're out there. No, they're in here, dummy. They're in you. Those voices are in you, not outside. I can't tell me how, many, how much dope I flushed thinking that the cops were at my door and how much I ate. <laughs> Thank God I'm a new creation. What a terrible life to live. You know, think about it. How terrible, to total torment, trickery, being used by the enemy. Can't wait for the next paycheck to give it back to the devil. What a terrible life to live. Thank God for his mercies and grace. It makes a way where there seems to be no way. Hallelujah. Where are we at now, Ephesians 4? Verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the, stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, immature, tossed to and fro, carried away by every wind of doctrine, by the what? Trickery of men. In lust, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So that we're no longer tossed by the to and fro by the trickery of lust. Again, there's two types of Christian, obedient and rebellious. There's also another two types of Christian, those that are wise and those that are foolish. Both of them, the Lord shut the door in their face. Amen? The foolish, amen, and the disobedient, the Lord shut the door in their face. Hallelujah. Romans 6, verse 12. Therefore, do not let sin, presence of evil, reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its what? Lust. Do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. But present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under the plan of God. Amen. Hallelujah. When not abiding in the plan of God, which is called grace, then you're, plan then you're living under the law. Of, and that's the judgment of God. Again, grace is the plan of God. So there's got to be cooperation with God's plan. If you're not in cooperation with God's plan, then you're under the law. And that's how the world will be judged, is under the law. Psalm 119. In verse 105, let's speak it together. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Say it again. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 
there are two divine properties that must be established with us all the time. The Word, which is light. And the Spirit, which is life. Those are two divine properties. John chapter 6, verse 62. But then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before, verse 63, it is the Spirit who gives what? Life. Everybody see it? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. In other words, again, the two divine properties is the Word of God which brings light and the Spirit of God which brings life. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. Let's speak it, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Are we in the last days? Is there perilous times? You bet you. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, Slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people turn away. For these are the sort that creep into households and ministries and make captives of gullible men and women, loaded them down with sins and led of bear with various, various what? Lusts. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They can never break free. Now, Janus and Jasperus resisted Movis, so these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all, and theirs also was. Again, these are players of roulette game. What is the roulette game? Lust. No faith. Feeling. No faith, just feeling. And I'm going to close Ecclesiastes 12. And verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. And keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or or evil either good or evil so father we thank you for your word and we ask lord that you would make a way of escape for anyone who's playing roulette of lust let this word be sealed into our spirit and bring to remembrance that we may turn away from those things that are corrupt I pray for blessing over each and every one tonight and that you'd visit them in dreams and visions and revelations. In Jesus' name. Everybody sit